So, this Luca heat carry generation part the, the, this portion. So, we can uh, make it a uh, design which is again an iterative design. Suppose, I have got this uh, 4 bit Luca heat carry generator uh, circuitry. So, that has got uh, C i as uh, input and it uh, generates uh, of course, this a i and b i those uh, x i and y i those bits are there. So, it is not shown here explicitly. So, this uh, g i and p i so they are um, coming here in terms of that x i and y i. So, that part is not shown here and it generates this uh, c i plus 1, c i plus 2, c i plus 3 and it generates uh, this uh, p i plus uh, i 2 i plus 3 and g i 2 i plus 3. So, those portions. Now, if we have got that uh, this uh, carry look ahead generator 4 bit uh, version. So, now you can use it for 16 bit uh, carry look ahead circuitry. So, we have got this uh, 4 such carry look ahead blocks connected and this carry look ahead blocks. So, they are getting say uh, this uh, uh, say this uh, say G 0, P 0, G 1, P 1, G 2, P 2 etcetera and it is generating two uh, generate uh, one generate signal and one propagate signal. So, this generate signal will be fed will be fed to this uh, C L A generator circuit. So, this is actually this block is similar to this block. So, whatever be the number of inputs here similar number of inputs are there, they are in this C L A generator block also and we are just uh, using some sort of hierarchical structure. Okay. So, this is um, uh, using uh, the same C L A generator block, but it is uh, this uh, this uh, G inputs are coming from this uh, the corresponding C L A generator block of the previous uh, level of hierarchy and it is generating uh, G 0 to 15 and P 0 to 15. That is the if you take a 16 bit block then this will be the generate signal from the 15 bit block and this will be the propagate signal uh, from the 16 bit block and this is the propagate signal from the 16 bit block. So, you can cascade another such uh, block here. Uh, so, to get a 32 bit block. So, that way we can go ahead. So, we can uh, we will uh, look into an example. So, these are simple formulas that uh, we have got this uh, delay calculations and all like this g i p i. So, the formula is g i equal to x i y i. So, that that will incur, incur one, de one gate delay and this uh, p i computation is x i x or y i. So, that is also one gate delay. Now, this g i to i plus 3 and p i to i plus 3 they follow this particular formula and here if I if I am assuming two uh, two level realization of the circuit, then there there is one uh, one uh, uh, set of AND gates that will be realizing this G i plus 2 into P i plus 3. Similarly, G i plus 1 in uh, and P i plus 2 and P i plus 3. So, this way it will be realizing the AND terms and after that there will be an OR term. So, there will be two gate delay in the generate uh, the G i to i plus 3 and P i to i plus 3. So, uh, for this uh, C 4, C 8 and C 12, so we will have two gate delays for G 0 to G 0 15 and P 0 15 that will also have two gate delays. Now, for uh, this uh, C i plus 1, i plus 2, i plus 3 for i equal to 4, 8 and 12, they will see two gate delays. So, because of this expression, so if you look into this expression, so you will see how many gate delays are necessary. So, this way it can uh, total 8 gate levels in the carry look ahead adder versus 32 gate levels in the ripple carry adder. So, if I if I am had having a 16 bit adder, then there will be 32 gate level in the ripple carry adder because this uh, individual stage it will have that sum and carry. So, that will be the carry comp cal calculation will have two stages. Okay. So, that way it will have total 32 stage, but this if you are using this carry look ahead mechanism, so that will have only 8 stage. That is why this carry look ahead adder, so they are going to be much faster uh, than this uh, ripple carry adder and in many uh, applications so where we need fast addition subtraction. So, we go for this carry look ahead adder instead of ripple carry. Of course, the penalty that we pay is the number of um, uh, gates that are needed becomes very high. So, this is the thing that I was talking about. So, this is uh, suppose I have got this uh, 16 bit uh, carry look ahead uh, blocks. Okay. Now, from there, so I can uh, I can have some 32 bit block and from there I can have some 64 bit block. So, here it is a 64 bit block that is generated that is shown here in terms of uh, this cascading of this uh, clock generator circuit. Okay. 
and the, these are different gate delays calculations that we have. So, it is similar to the previous calculation. So, in that uh, in summary you can say that a look ahead adder. So, now total if there is a carry bit uh, k bit carry look ahead then the total look ahead adder delay is 4 into log of k. So, that gives the uh, advantage like k equal to say um, uh, if I have got the uh, adder size just a 32 then look ahead adder delay will be 12 stages and this ripple carry adder will have 64 stages. So, so, so that was for 256 bit addition. So, look ahead adder will have got a delay of 16 uh, stages and carry look ahead, ripple carry will have 512 stages. So, that is pretty high. Next we will be looking into decimal adder. So, decimal adder means that I have got the uh, binary uh, coded decimal digits B C D and then uh, I want to add them. So, in here, so here uh, I have got the digits uh, Im important for 0 to 9 only, so rest are not important. So, they are coded like this, so 9 is coded as 1001 and the rest of that uh, combi 4 bit combinations are not valid for the BCD addition. For So, these are the forbidden codes 1010, 1011 and all. So, for decimal adder, so we have got the inputs A3, A2, A1, A0. B3, B2, B1, B0 and C in from the previous cascade state and output was C out and Z3, Z2, Z1, Z0. And so, what we do for decimal adder is that we perform regular binary addition and then we do some corrective procedure. So, for example, here uh, we have got this uh, number 0 to 9 for this part it is same. Okay. So, actually this, uh, this slightly uh, shifted. So, this is uh, for 0 to 9, if the decimal sum is equal to 0 to 9, then it is same. However, if the decimal sum is 10, 1010, so it will be represented in the BCD form. So, they will be, they will be represented as a carry bit being 1 and this Z3, Z2, Z1, Z0 being 0. Similarly, for 11, if the decimal sum is 11, then the C out will be equal to 1 and this Z0 will be equal to 1 and the rest of them will remain as 0. 12 will be like that. So, basically uh, this C out bit will be set to 1 whenever the sum becomes uh, greater than 9 for the uh, BCD addition. Okay. So, this way I can, uh, so C out is uh, 0 for this part and for other parts, so it will be equal to 1. So, no correction is needed when the decimal sum is between 0 and 9 and we must apply a correction when the sum is between 0 and 19. So, at most you can add to 9 and 9, so that is at most the value can be 18. So, the, the value will be between 0 and 10 and 19, so you have to do some correction. So, this, uh, so these are the rules for BCD addition. So, when the binary sum is greater than 1001, we obtain a non-valid uh, BCD representation and the binary, the addition of binary 6 to the binary sum, it will convert the number to the correct BCD form. So, whenever it becomes more than 1001, so you just add this 6 okay, to the binary to the to whatever sum you have got and that gives the corrective action. So, to distinguish between 1000 that is binary 1000 and 1001, so which will also have 1 in position Z8, so we specify that either Z4 and Z2 must have a value 1. So, C is equal to K plus Z8 Z4 plus Z8 Z2. So, this is the uh, BCD sum, uh, sum, sum uh, part. So, this is uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. So, this will be added if this uh, uh, if this Z8 uh, so that uh, if Z8 K4. So, if you look into this expression it is K plus Z8 Z4 plus Z8 Z2. So, if this is the situation then only the carry is generated. So, what we are doing for with this 4 bit uh, addition result. So, we are trying to add this 6, but that is conditional conditional subject to the case that there was a carry or this uh, Z8 Z4 uh, was equal to 1 or Z8 Z2 was equal to 1. So, if you draw the corresponding truth table, then we will find that under these conditions, so we need to do the correction of adding 6 to the uh, binary addition result to get the BCD addition. So, a decimal parallel adder that adds n decimal digits needs a n, bit, uh, n BCD ad adder stages and the output carry from one stage must be connected to the input carry of the next higher stage. So, that is obvious. So, you, if you need uh, more number of uh, decimal digits to be added, so the, then this entire block has to be repeated uh, one after the other to get the 
BCD addition for higher number of digits. Next, we will look into the multiplier. Now, you see that if I have got uh, two bits A and B as input, then the, uh, the, the, the multiplication is like this A, B, A, A and B is it is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, if you compare with the AND operation, you see that we are getting the same thing. So, this AND is some sort of uh, two bit uh, binary multiplication. So, this uh, by two bit binary multiplication is same as the AND of the two bits. For three bit multiplication, so suppose so we have to we will generate this uh, partial product terms. So, 101, 101. So, this uh, 101 multiplied by 1. So, that generates this partial term 101. Then this 101 multiplied by the second one that generates this partial sum and then multiplied by 0 that generates this partial sum and then we, have, then we add all these partial sums to get the result. So, we have the partial products and uh, this partial product summation for n digit base 2 numbers requires adding up the uh, uh, up to n digits in a column. So, that way we are going to add these digits. So, that if I am multiplying an n by uh, one n bit number by an m bit number, then we have to uh, generate it will generate an m plus n digit uh, number. Okay. So, that is there, there for multiplication. So, Boolean equations for multiplication. So, it will be like this. So, if I am taking as a 2 bit multiplication for example, then this generates a 0 b 0 and a 0 b 1 as the, this partial sum and then this a 1 b 0 and a 1 b 1 as another partial sum, then this partial sums are added the p 0, p 1, p 2, p 3 that generates the product terms. Okay. So, this is the circuitry for that. <coughs> so, this generates a 0 b 0, then this generates a 0 b 1 a 1 b 0 and a 1 b 1 and then this a 0 b 0 uh, uh, directly gives uh, the, it is not added with anything. So, that that come directly comes at the multiplicate uh, the result output c 0 then this a 0 b 1 and a 1 b 0 are to be added. So, I can use a half adder here because there is no carry. So, I can just uh, use a half adder to do that and then uh, uh, from this some carry may be generated and that carry has to be added with a 1 b 1. So, this a 1 b 1 and that carry uh, comes and that will generate the uh, um, the sum c 2 and the carry c 3. So, this way I can use this circuitry to get a 2 by 2 binary multiplier. Now, some special cases. So, in, decim in decimal an easy way to multiply by 10 is to shift all digits to the left and uh, put a 0 to the right end. So, 1 to 8 uh, multiplied by 10. So, we know the result is 1 to 8 and a 0. So, we shift the numbers uh, digits by to the left and put a 0 at the right end. So, for the same thing we can do with the uh, binary one. So, so, we can shift left uh, is equivalent to multiplying by 2. So, the so shifting left is multiplying by 2. So, for example, this 1 1 multiplied by 1 0 is uh, in decimal system it is 3 into 2 which is equal to 6. So, if you convert it into uh, binary notation, so it is 1 1 0. So, what has happened is that this 1 1, so it has been left shifted and this um, least significant bit position we have put a 0. Okay. So, that gives the binary uh, shifting uh, this multiplication by 2 and if you uh, shift it twice, shift left twice then it is a multiplication by 4. So, for example, this 1 1, so if I left shift twice then I will get 1 1 0 0 and this number is nothing but 12. So, this 3 into 4 is 12. So, uh, this is basically left shifting by 2 bits. So, shifting to the right is equivalent to dividing by 2. So, if you are uh, so for, for, for example, this 1 1 0 that is uh, uh, 6. So, if you are uh, uh, shifting it by uh, uh, right position, so you are shifting it right means this 0 will go. So, 1 1 will remain. So, that is 1 1 and the result is 3. So, this is nothing but 6 divided by 2 is 3. So, this multiplication uh, and multiplication by 2. So, this is basically left shifting the number by the 1 position. Multiplication by 2 power i is left shifting the number by i positions and similarly division by 2 is right shifting the number by 1 position and division by 2 to the power i is right shifting the number by i positions. So, this way we can have the special cases uh, for multiplication by multiplication and division by powers of 2. So, for 4 bit uh, multiplication, so 4 by 3 binary multiplier. So, we have got one 4 bit input uh, b 0, b 1, b 2, b 3. 
and we have got 3 bit input a 0 a 1 a 2. So, what we can do? So, we can generate this uh, partial sums in this fashion. Okay. So, then uh, they can be passed through some adders. Okay. So, two 4 bit adders will be necessary and we can pass them through the adder and ultimately we can get this uh, sum which is consisting of 7 bit. So, uh, 8 uh, C0, C0 to C6 plus there will be another carry. So, 4 plus 3 7 it is the result may be 8 bit also. So, that way there will be another carry generated. Okay. So, this way we can have this partial sums generated and we can do the multiplication. Of course, this multiplication process that we have talked about is pretty slow and in case of uh, integrated circuit uh, chips particularly in VLSI domain. So, you can find many other efficient uh, multiplication algorithms that have come up. So, this is the basic multiplication algorithm that we have discussed and the idea is to see how, how can we do it using logic gates and all. Next, we will be looking into another uh, very important uh, uh, arithmetic module which is known as magnitude comparator. So, I have got two uh, inputs I need to tell whether the uh, one of them is equal to the other, greater than the other or less than the other. So, if I have got a 2 bit value, so it is like this. So, see suppose a b is the first number and c d is the second number. So, what is uh, uh, what is happening is that this a b is if a b is 0 0 then if c d is 0 then this less than is 0 equal is 1 and greater than is 0 that is these two numbers are equal. So, this e q output is 1 and this uh, less than and greater than these two outputs are 0. Similarly, if a b is 0 0 and c d is 0 1. So, this less than uh, output is 1 equal output is 0 and this uh, greater than output is 0. Then this is 1 0 again the same thing. So, this since this a b is 0 0. So, whatever be the c d apart from 0 0 this less than will be 1 others will be 0. So, this way I can draw a truth table for I can make a truth table for uh, writing the entire uh, behavior of this uh, block uh, of this uh, comparator block. So, for doing the minimization, so we will need 4 variable Carnot map for each of these uh, 3 output functions. Okay. So, we have to draw 4, 4 variable Carnot maps and accordingly we can do the minimization, get the circuitry and ultimately we can say it is less than equal to and greater than these 3 outputs we can see we can draw the corresponding logic circuit. So, this is the thing. So, k map for less than is a bar b bar d plus a bar c plus b bar c d, e q is this one. Okay, so, this a bar b bar c bar d bar okay, or a bar b c bar a c bar d that is either a and b actually the logic is that a and b both are 0, c and d should also be 0, a is 0, b is 1. So, c should be 0 and d should be 1. So, this way I can do it. So, this equality, so if you if you look it look into it more carefully, so you can find that this can also be written as a x naught c and b x naught d. Okay, so, that way it can be there. So, this is the equal. So, uh, the, so, that way we can draw the corresponding uh, truth table and from there I can get the logic functions realized in terms of basic logic gates. Now, let us look into this equality comparator uh, uh, more carefully. Suppose, I have got only 2 bits to be compared and I have to say whether the bits are equal or not. So, in terms of truth table, so, if it is 0 0 then the output is 1, if it is 0 1 it is 0, 1 0 is 0 and 1 1 is also 1 for these two cases it is 1. Now, you see that this uh, uh, truth table corresponds to simple x nor logic. So, it is a 2 input x nor gate. So, this is what is um, happening here. So, z equal to x x nor y. So, this x nor gate is an equality comparator. So, if I have if I need a 4 bit equality comparator equality detector then this this may be the block diagram of that. So, I have got this a uh, uh, 4 bit input a 3 a 2 a 1 a 0 and similarly b 3 b 2 b 1 b 0. So, this is the uh, um, uh, this is the uh, b 4 bit b input and it answers a equal to b. So, this output is 1 only when this a and b input this a and b inputs are equal to each other. So, I can take a very simple circuit consisting of 4 x naught gates. Okay. So, this a 0 um, uh, a 0 and b 0 fed to the first x naught a 1 b 1 fed to the ne next x naught like that. And now, this c 0 c 1 c 2 c 3. So, they are they are to be ended. So, this end gate is not. So, they are to be ended to get a equal to b. 
Okay. So, that can be a 4 bit equality comparator. But what about a magnitude comparison like so not only equality I also want less than and greater than output. So, the A is less than B or A is greater than B. So, equality is definitely fine. So, how can we get A greater than B? So, how many rows will the truth table have? So, if we try to answer this question then since there are 8 uh, inputs A0 to uh, if since we have got 8 inputs a0 to a3 and b0 to b3 total number 8 inputs so if i am trying to draw a truth table so there will be 256 entries so if i am trying to draw a carnot map then it is an 8 variable carnot map that we have to minimize so that is a very clumsy way that is a very so so far in our course we have seen that we can draw k map up to 6 variables not more than that so that uh, makes it uh, difficult so we have to uh, do some uh, something else for getting the minimized form so, if you see that if A equal to 1001 and B equal to 0111, then A is greater than B. Why? This is because this most significant bit A3 is equal to 1 here and uh, B3, B3 is 0 here. So, A is greater than B. Now, because A3 greater than B, so A3, so the condition is A3 B3 dash or A3 B3 bar is equal to 1. Now, one term in the logic equation for A greater than B is A3 B3 bar. Now, what about uh, this one? Say, if I have got A equal to 1101 and B as 1011. So, here also A is greater than B because the second uh, first two bits A3 and B3 were same and A2 was 1 and B2 was 0. So, I can say that A3 is equal to B3 and A2 greater than B2 that is why I have got C3 equal to 1. So, C3 equal to 1 if A2 B2 dash equal to 1 and A3 equal to B3. So, we have got the so, so C3 was A3 equal to B3, okay, so this C3 was A3 equal to B3. So, the condition becomes C3 and A2 and B2 bar B2, uh, B2 dash. That way if we just shift by one more position, so you will get the condition one more condition there. So, that will be uh, this This is the thing that A 3 equal to B 3, A 2 equal to B 2 and A 1 greater than B 1. So, we have got C 3 equal to 1, C 2 equal to 1 and A 1 B 1 dash equal to 1. So, you see that the A 3 greater than A greater than B terms becomes C 3 and C 2 and A 1 and B 1 bar. And naturally, I will have a, one more stage where it will be doing this uh, B 0 also like only the, the b0 the, the a0 and b0 bits are differing so if so this is the situation the a0 b0 dash is equal to 1 c3 equal to 1 c2 equal to 1 and c1 equal to 1 so i will get the last term as c3 c2 c1 a0 b0 dash so the final expression becomes like this so a greater than b is a3 b3 dash plus c3 a2 b2 dash plus c3 c2 a1 b1 dash plus C 3 C 2 C 1 A 0 B 0 dash and this can be realized by this circuit. You see that we have got a very clean circuit here and uh, we do not uh, take help of the uh, Carnot map and all. So, sometimes uh, that makes that process makes it very uh, difficult and uh, we have to use some other logic to come to the uh, um, circuit. So, similarly you can say A less than B, A less than B is given by this formula A 3 dash B 3. So, A 3 is 0 and B 3 is 1 or A 3 B 3 is same detected by this condition C 3 and A 2 bar A, A 2 is 0 and B 2 is 1 or C 3 C 2 that is A 3 B 3 is same A 2 B 2 is same and A 1 is 0 and B 1 is 1 and this condition A 3 B 3 same A 2 B 2 same A 1 B 1 same and A 0 is 0 and B 0 is 1. So, that way I can write down the condition for A less than B. Next, we will be looking into uh, another important topic which is known as code converter. So, many a times we want to convert uh, one uh, uh, numbers coded in some number system into some other number system. So, that is uh, uh, that is known as code converter. So, they are coded in different form. So, this is a code converter, it is a logic circuit that changes data represented in one type of binary code to another type of binary code. For example, 
BCD code to binary code, binary code to BCD code, BCD to seven segment binary, uh, BCD to seven segment display code, then binary to BCD, BCD to XS3 code. So, like that binary to gray code, gray to binary code. So, there are different types of uh, um, uh, codes that are there and many a times we need to interchange between these, uh, these type of codes. Okay? So, how to do these code conversions that we will see now. So, two digit, two digit decimal values ranging from 00 to 99 can be represented by BCD of, uh, in BCD by two 4 bit uh, code groups. So, that can be utilized for doing this conversion. So, first we will be looking into BCD to binary conversion. Okay. So, one method for BCD to binary conversion is uh, by some uh, adder circuit. So, value or weight of each bit in the BCD number is represented by a binary number and all of the binary representations of the weights of the bits that are 1 in the BCD number they will get added. Okay. So, this way we can have some adder circuitry and using that adder we can convert the BCD number to binary number. So, it is like this. So, 46, so 46 uh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, 4 this is the notation and 6 this is the thing. So, this is the uh, decimal number and this is the BCD number. Now, this most significant bit it has got a weight of 10 and the least significant bit has a weight of 1. So, the most significant 4 bit group represents 40 and the least significant 4 bit group represents 6. Okay. So, uh, because this is for this is this weight is 10 and this weight is uh, 1. So, this is 4 into 10 plus 6. So, that we can do. So, we can say that this bit position so, this is uh, decimal weight is uh, bit position 1 and bit position 0. So, 10 to the power 0 and 10 to the power 1. So, if the binary weight of that, uh, so if you look into that uh, uh, number at uh, weight 10 okay, and uh, look into the corresponding, uh, if you look into the corresponding uh, binary number, uh, binary weight. So, this is 2 power 0, 1, 2 and 3. So, the BCD number the BCD bit weight is 2 power 3 into 10, this is 2 power 2 into 10, this is 2 power 1 into 10 and 2 power 0 into 10. Now, so for example, this 46, so 46 it has got 0, 1, 0, 0. So, this 0 gives a contribution of 0, then this, uh, uh, this so this uh, 4, uh, this, this 4 is represented by the first uh, 4 bits and this 6 is represented by the next 4 bits and for the first 4 bits they have got a weight of 10. Now, these uh, numbers, uh, so now this 0 multiplied by 10 that gives me 0, 1 multi uh, 1 is, uh, uh, so this is 2 power 2, so that is 4 multiplied by 10 that gives me 40, then this is 2 multiplied by uh, uh, 0, so 2 power 1 into uh, uh, that value is 0, so that is that is giving me 0, so that way, so this part gives me 10 and this part gives me 6. So, So, binary equivalent of each BCD digit will is a binary number and it is represented as a, as a BCD weight bit. So, this is uh, the BCD position uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H as we have seen here, this, uh, this bit designation A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So, they have got uh, this BCD weight values like this and corresponding binary representations like this. So, this way we can uh, do this binary to BCD conversion like the result from this addition of binary representation of the weights of all the ones in the BCD number. So, that will give me the corresponding binary number. So, this is the, so 0, 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. So, that is represented uh, the, 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 if we take the corresponding weight and all, so the value was 40. So, that is giving it. Similarly, this was this two, this bit is 1 and this bit is 1 and for this bit I know that the corresponding weight is 4. Okay, so, this 4 is added and for this bit I know the corresponding weight is 2. So, this 2 is added. So, this gives me this number. So, after doing this all these additions, so it gives me 46 in the binary number. So, similarly, suppose I have to convert this 26 uh, into binary. So, again we do, do the same thing. That's the, so, this part is uh, all of them they will contribute to uh, 10 and this is this is uh, 2 power 0 1 this is 2 power 1 2 2 power 2 4 and this is 8 so this is uh, this is 2 so 2 into 10 so that gives me 20 so i write down the uh, binary representation for 20 then in this in this part so this part is to uh, um, this weight is 10 power 0 
okay, for this all the 4 bits the weight is 10 power 0. So, this is uh, this bit is 1 2. So, 2 into 10 power 0 that is 1. So, that, that gives me 2. So, I write down that binary representation for 2. Similarly, here I write down the binary representation for 4 and I sum them up. So, this gives me the binary 26. So, in this way we can convert uh, BCD numbers to equivalent uh, binary numbers. Uh, of course, we, can, we have got other avenues. So, we can have a, a truth table and uh, write down the corresponding Boolean functions for doing this conversion as well.